So our next storyteller, God, uh, this guy, what doesn't he do? He's an assistant professor of public policy at the Kennedy School, but he's also uh, a podcaster, an actor, an improviser. You can listen to his podcast, These Teenagers, in which he uses academic analyses of teenage soap operas like Gossip Girl and Glee. Uh, it's really awesome. It's part of overthinking it. You can, you can check that out online. Please welcome to the stage, Ryan Sheely. <laughs> I looked on in horror as my seventh grade science teacher, Miss Weeman, scraped away at the whiteout with her fingernail. See, I had been held after class because something about the materials that I had turned in for my middle school science project looked a little fishy to Miss Weeman. In particular, she was really suspicious about why one word on a whole typewritten page was whited out and covered with uh, writing in my own handwriting. And so she was determined to get to the bottom of this. So as she scraped away, whispering under her breath, let's see what's under here, I got more and more nervous because I knew that the word that was underneath the whiteout was masturbation. <laughs> now, I'm sure this is not what Miss Weeman expected when she signed up to be the science teacher for 7WA, the advanced science class in Mannheim Township Middle School in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, and, and this was a class that was designed to, uh, to track students to, into advanced science uh, and also advanced humanities and, um, and social sciences. And I was thrilled, in part because that was my default setting uh, as a 12-year-old in, in 1995. I was always excited and enthusiastic and energetic about everything related to school. Um, and especially, I threw myself into my assignments, into my projects with, with a zeal uh, that was definitely not even warranted by, by the assignment itself. Um, and often, often really uh, went to a level uh, of, of elaborateness that was uncalled for. For example, in uh, our seventh grade reading class, my best friend Matt Cushman and myself uh, did our book report on the book Misery by Stephen King. Um, and it was complete, uh, we actually acted out the entire scene, uh, the leg breaking scene, the infamous leg breaking scene uh, with costumes. I was actually in drag as the character played by Kathy Bates. Um, and then we had actual, uh, we, had, we, we made fake blood using corn syrup and, and dye. <laughs> Um, and it was, it, was, it was a huge hit. Um, and I think everything would have been great if, um, if I could have uh, just focused all of my attention in middle school on these really elaborate projects. But the other thing that one uh, focuses their attention on in middle school is the elaborate social ecosystem uh, of seventh grade. And for me, I, I had left uh, elementary school at the bottom of the hierarchy. Um, you know, it was called different things, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a nerd, maybe a loser. Um, but I, I, I saw the move from elementary school to middle school as a chance to kind of at least move a few notches up in the hierarchy, not all the way to, to being a cool kid or to a jock. But I thought, you know, at least I could move up a little bit. I, I, what I had my sights on, I think my friend and I in uh, 7WA, there was a group of us who were sort of scholarly slackers. Um, and that, you know, we, we uh, it was the mid-90s, it was 1995, so, you know, we were into the alternative and grunge and punk music and, and clothes of the time. But it was mostly on the inside. I mean, if you look at our class photo, you know, we're there smiling in our, in our tucked-in shirts and nice, nice new jeans that our moms put us in for photo day. Uh, but on the, in, in our minds, those, uh, those flannel shirts were untucked and the jeans were ripped. Um, um, and, and that's how we saw ourselves. Um, and you know, I think myself, I think the role that I carved out for myself in this scene was as, as a class clown. And so I started to really devote my energy not into only my productive, uh, elaborate productions uh, for, for projects, but into stealing attention from the teachers of making voices and sound effects and really goofy, ill-advised pranks. Um, and, and my, you know, it started to wear on all of my teachers, uh, in part because you know, they loved the enthusiasm for the material, but it was starting to get distracting. But I'd never, I'd never gotten in trouble until this time that I, was, that I was pulled aside after class by Miss Weeman. 
And it all started really innocently enough, uh, innocuously enough, uh, as another project. And the assignment was to design and implement a, an experiment. And what I wanted to do an experiment on was building off of a study that was in the news a lot at the time on the Mozart effect, which is the idea that listening to Mozart improves various kinds of cognitive functioning and intelligence. And so I wanted to test an extension of this. It was a very simple hypothesis. So if listening to Mozart makes you smarter, then listening to the punk band Green Day makes you even smarter than that. <laughs> and listening to Kenny G makes you less smart. <laughs> because my parents loved the smooth sounds of Jags saxophonist Kenny G, whereas Green Day was the favorite, was my favorite of all of the many punk bands that I listened to at the time. And you know, my parents and I hadn't had always had such divergent musical tastes. I remember fondly, you know, when I was a kid, we all could seem to agree on Huey Lewis in the news, you know, dancing together in our living room to hip to be square. Um, but as I made that difficult transition into middle school and, and had my eyes on, on, on being something a little, little cooler, uh, I, I, I fell into to punk music. And I think I really liked Green Day because, you know, the energy and rebellion at least synced up very well with my inner life um, and, and, and with my, my energy. And, and I identified with it really strongly. And so the experiment that I wanted to do was very simple. One group of my test subjects, uh, that is my seventh grade classmates, uh, one group would read an article and then answer some questions in silence. Another group would do that while listening to Kenny G. Uh, and the third group would do that while listening to the amazing sounds of Green Day. And they would score higher on the test. I, it was, it was obvious. Um, and so I wrote this up and submitted it to Miss Weeman, who rejected it uh, for two reasons. One is that she thought on scientific grounds uh, the hypothesis was not justified. But second, she, she thought that it just was not appropriate for school and for a class project. Now, I could have I just taken that advice and just done the Kenny G uh, experiment, but at this point, the, the mischievousness and rebellion um, kicked in. And so I said, well, I, I need to get Green Day in here somehow. So I went up to the, uh, the middle school library, uh, went to our article database, and found a great article on, on Green Day. I said, I'm going to have Green Day be the article that everybody reads for the test. Um, and so I found a great article from Rolling Stone magazine, which was perfect except for one, one little detail in, the, in which Green Day's breakout uh, single Longview was described as an ode to masturbation. And so this, this, again, posed two problems. One is that I knew this would not fly with Miss Weeman at all. But number two, I didn't even agree with that analysis. Uh, <laughs> is he... Uh, so, yes, it's true that in Longview there is the lyric that uh, when masturbation's lost its fun, you're fucking lonely. But that's not what the song's about. The song is about alienation. The song is about boredom. And, and so I just said I made a small editorial change and whited out masturbation and wrote boredom. And that's how I wound up held after class by Miss Weeman. Um, and and why, once she finally got all the white out away, she decided that this was the last straw. This was the thing that she was going to make the stand on. Um, called together all of the other teachers in the team that was, advi uh, that was advising us, uh, middle schoolers, and decided that it was time for a parent-teacher conference. So my parents get called in not knowing the full context. And I was a little too embarrassed to tell them about what I had done. Um, and they, uh, well, the teachers sat them down, they said, you know, we just think that Ryan is a little squirrely. Squirrely <laughs> is the charge. And my parents are like, oh, is that, is that it? And they, you know, they listed the kind of goofy things that I had done. And, and, they, and they were, you know, very interested in really relatively severe punitive measures to, to really break me of the squirreliness. And my parents, I guess, must have not listened to Kenny G that day, or at the very least, you know, maybe listened to some Green Day, because they pushed back a little bit, and they said, let's, let's ride this out, you know, he's 12. Um, and this is not horrible. Um, and so they, they, and they uh, resolved to, you know, encourage me to use the squirreliness in, in productive ways. Um, and, but the teachers said, that's, that's fine, but consider this the last warning. And if there's one more, one more incident, there will be consequences. So I, with this in mind, I went on. I, I did, did the, the experiment with just Kenny G. I got an A. I survived the seventh grade. 
survived middle school, and then went on to, to thrive in high school, threw myself into schoolwork. Um, and it's not because the, my seventh grade teachers managed to, to really get rid of the squirreliness, but rather because my parents encouraged me to, to harness that in, in productive ways. And you know, even, even now, uh, as, as a 30-year-old professor at Harvard, I am still about as squirrely as I was 17 years ago. Um, and, and I've just managed to tame it. But even in my own, in my own political science research, uh, all of my research projects are about as elaborate as the projects that I did for class uh, in seventh grade, just with a lot less fake blood and almost no references to masturbation. Um, and, uh, and in the same way, I'm still a class clown. I still, um, I still like to perform. I do improv. I do podcasts. I tell stories. Um, and so I, I, you know, I'm really grateful for this, this moment, it, uh, because, for this experience, because it gave this moment of clarity of, th of this is who I, wa uh, who I am and how I approach creativity. So I just you know, want to close to, you know, in a very serious note, and thank, you know, the people that played the most crucial role in this transformation of me into this squirrely teenager, into a squirrely adult. Uh, and so, Green Day, if you're listening, thank you very much for inspiring me and, and telling me to never give up and to never, to never give in. Thank you. Brian Sheely. Can I just get, on purely philosophical grounds, a giant round of applause for all the adults who encourage squirreliness in 12-year-olds. Let's have a round of give, applause give it for up. that. Keep that going for Green Day. Oh, that, that was actually weak. OK, um, why don't we move this on to the break? Let's, yes. uh, we're going to take about a 10-minute break right now.